was filled with love. Then I got to go on. I just can't go on. everyone good evening How are you? welcome to the next episode of marvin frank's true crime unsolved squad yep that's what marvelous investigates is going to be turning into in the next couple of weeks so um just wanted to say hi to a few folks raggedy ann melissa willow rain hello Sammy, um, let's see, support with Stefa. Thanks for being here and moderating. So we've got Lynn here, Nadia, Stephanie, nice to see you, Sandy, another Lynn, Vanessa, another Stephanie, lots of Stephanie's tonight. Lynn's going to be here. I am vengeance. Jill, Judy, Teresa, Jan, Bruce, Woo, I like that name. D, my Charlie, um, Boston, Vid Inquiries, how you doing? So I'm sorry. Oh, TTM fangirl, how are you tonight? Bruce is here, or Brett is here. Bruce is also here. Monsters Under Our Bed is here. Polly's here. Lady M. Sean, hey, nice to see ya. Raggedy Susan, you like that background? <laughs> Min. Erica. <coughs> so if I missed anybody, I'm sorry. Um, welcome to all of um, the Monsters Under Our Bed subscribers. So glad to have you here. I'm going to bring in our panel. So first, I'm adding Randy Gravit to the panel. How are you, Randy? I'm doing fine. How's everybody else doing out there? Oh, uh, long day. Yep. We're supposed to have a freeze warning up down here uh, tonight. Oh. Yeah. All right, next I'm going to add Steve to the panel. Steve, how are you tonight? It's an honor to be here with you guys. Appreciate oh, thank you, you very there, much. Steve. Next, I am going to add Chris from Monsters Under Our Bed. Hi, Chris, how are you? Good, how's everybody? Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Good. And finally, I am adding Fig Solves. Hey, nice to see you, Fig. Fig how are hey, you? everyone. How's it going? Nice, nice to see, see you. Good, good. Yeah, so Fig. This is our 
like I introduced at the beginning, uh, their fig, this is uh, the part two of uh, our suspected POIs that we've come up a list with. And what we're planning to do is go through each one, but we won't use names. We'll use uh, just their eyes and their nose next to the NASA photo. And I'll give a little background on each person and let everybody just let their mind wander and say, hey, does this look like DG or not? And then Steve's going to explain to everybody how he came up with everything and how he did things with his own way of doing things. So if you want to get started. Uh, first, I got to do a couple house house cleaning items. Um, one, in part one of the live, we had mentioned, somebody had mentioned a cryptic note. And um, we said that we knew that Grizz did it, but we want to go back and say it's a criming shame. Sunny Justice had first done that um, on her um, live stream. So we want to make sure we give her credit for that. So thank you. And I apologize, guys. I had never seen anything on that that creator's uh, channel refer to that cryptic note. And I learned it from Grizz. And I apologize. Once again, we want to yep. give a shout out to uh, to Crying Shame for actually doing that the first time. Yep. And then second of all, we have um, the chat on slow mode so that we can try to catch questions easier tonight. Um, third, it's on subscribers only. So if you haven't subscribed, subscribe to the channel and you'll be able to chat in the chat box. All right. So, okay, go ahead, Shane. If you want to pull up the first image next to the NASA photo. Uh, can we do something, a recap for some of the new viewers that may have not have caught on with the uh, what we're doing here and let Randy introduce the NASA picture. And, uh, Absolutely. So, so everybody be on the same page and how we uh, do these measurements. Yep. Ready? All right. Um, where I got this let me just let me just get it up there. Okay. Um, one second here. Lost it. I have so many pictures in this folder now. <laughs> Here we go. Switch screens here. Okay. Give me, give me okay. just a second, guys. All right. Go ahead, Randy. All right. Um, where I got this photo, we talked about a long time ago at the beginning of this case. Um, the family talked about NASA and Disney. Um, they Sorry tried about that. to do um, a close up of the bridge guy, what Webby took that day. So, between NASA, Disney, and several other companies that have more technology, technology. Yeah, okay, so. hang on one second, Randy. Everybody's saying there's a bad echo. I just turned my TV off so. Okay, yeah. let's see if that helps. USFL started tonight and I had it on. <laughs> okay, go ahead, Brandy. Okay, so with the technology, they went, NASA's got so much technology that be able, all these different cameras they got in outer space to on Mars and the moon and what else. Um, a friend of mine who is through my Facebook, she sent it to me, this image, a long time ago, at the beginning of this um, case, and they talked about on Dr. Phil's show. So, I sent it to Steve, see what he can come up with, and I explained to him what where this photo came from, and he worked on it, and he came up with several other um photos to get a little more uh better view of what the killer might look like um, okay 
All right. Um, after he sent it to me and uh, we did our first part one, um, I was contacted by Fig. He asked a very uh, pointed question to authenticate, which is a great move. And um, I had looked at it and I felt confident that it was Bridge Guy, but did we actually know if it was from NASA? Um, and so uh, we discussed it back and forth. And um, if you would pull up the uh, Bridge Guy NASA 1A from the uh, part two image file, uh, Mark, it's a double image side by side of Bridge Guy with a NASA. That one, if you blow it up a little bit. In our discussion between myself and Fig, uh, it, it, that the shadow line, the, the uh, similar hat, or whatever headgear is, the shadows across the nose, mouth, chin, uh, darkened area versus the overexposed area, all lines up. So it gives us confidence that this picture is actually something that was sent by someone to a, another agency or if it is NASA. Uh, I have no way of knowing if it was actually NASA that did the work on this. But I can tell you that whoever did the work on this had technology and they had skills because they brought that image up to a, a, a level that most certainly I can't do. Um, and so we have to give them recognition that regardless of which agency did it or whatever, it's just commonly known that we've repeated NASA, NASA. So it's so much easier just to refer to it as NASA. It may not be a NASA, but it, regardless if it's NASA or who else, it still uh, contains critical and uh, extremely valuable data that this is a really good image that I could go in there, work with, with the current computer systems and be able to adjust contrast, uh, work with some of the uh, tones and uh, filter it and come up with a, a pretty decent image. Uh, from that stage after that, uh, I felt comfortable, Fig uh, felt comfortable, I believe, is that correct, Fig? You feel comfortable now with that? And, uh... Yeah, and I just said, not because I didn't trust anyone. I always ask, like, all right, where did this come from? It was new to me. And as Randy probably knows, and everyone else knows, we get sent a lot of stuff, I'm sure. So, and I get told a lot of things from people, but um, I totally trust Randy. And then, so I'm just like, is it? Is it really? I was more of a surprise. I'm like, man, that's, I, I knew that there was mention of NASA and Disney helping out, but I'm like, oh, I didn't know there's actually a picture out there. So, yeah. Yep. So now I'm and, good with it. If Steve's good with it, I'm good with it. Well, uh, but the key point, uh, takeaway from this is that anytime anyone represents something, do exactly what Fig did. Question it. You might see something. Exactly. Or force, if you've got someone that just throws an opinion out there and doesn't have any support and evidence that you don't really know where it comes from or something, you know, it, it, this case has been uh, filled up with so much rubbish and rumor and everything else. Uh, and um, we only have certain information that we can work with. We're limited. Of course, we don't have total access to the case uh, file. But I just want to make that point that uh, I feel comfortable that someone with great skills, with good technology, uh, created this image. Now, if you'll, uh, uh, Marv, if you'll go to my measurement uh, uh, image of the two points on the nose, Yep. And from the uh, the darkened side of that uh, NASA image, I was able to go in there and run it through some filters um, uh, and um, adjust some contrast, do some lighting and stuff. And I came out with a single side image. I was able to mirror that, give me something that replicates uh, what is identified as something that's of a human face. And with this, I was able to uh, locate the approximate uh, location of where the uh, nose bridge is between the eyes and come down to where the nose tip was, which is critical data. Because once you have uh, data such as certain nose lengths or, uh, that uh, you can start measuring, bringing up uh, people of interest and doing comparative, that if you blow them up to the same ratio that those two measurements on anyone's nose, and it, quickest example is, is that I don't know what the length of this nose is, but that if let's say it was a two inch nose 
if you take someone with a one and a half inch nose from the, the bridge of the nose right between the eyes to the tip of the nose, that when you blow their uh, nose up to two inches, it's going to blow the eye set and uh, a certain distance is off the chart. And of course, you can eliminate people. But that's just the basis of, of what I did here to create this overlay so I can process and, and look at people's interest and see if we're going to uh, use the uh, put resources to look into the uh, information on. All right. Any questions? All right. Chris from Monsters Under Our Bed, what do you think of that with the distance and what he did there? Oh, I love that idea because um, now it's um, it's got me working some angles and some theories and some experiments that I'll be coming up uh, in the near future here. But, yeah, I think it's great. I like it. And Fig, what were your thoughts on, on that picture? Yeah, I was like, whoa. <laughs> That's the first time I saw it. So just trying to take it in. Yeah, it's great work. It's it's definitely, you know, seeing him break this down like this, it's, it's very interesting to me at least. Okay, Steve, go ahead. Um. We can start uh, if everybody's on the same page of what this and from this point here, once I had these distances, uh, what I did is, is that um, the uh, uh, Marv's team, Randy, Frank, Marv, sent me a collection of. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, it grows every day. And I actually uh, got a great in, uh, uh, new image today uh, sent by Fig of a, a person of interest that. Uh, um, yep. That. Uh, when we cover him, you'll see that um, he most certainly fits within the uh, uh, parameters of what would be uh, additional resources sent out on. So I appreciate that, Fig. Uh, good find. Uh, and uh, But uh, what I did, once I figured out the distance of this node, all these persons of interest that were sent to me um, uh, by the team, um, I went in there and created uh, a side-by-side -side across the point of the nose and to the eyes, such as this image here, so that you can see that this image, this person here had a sh shorter nose than what my per of what my uh, NASA uh, distance images was. And so that when you blow it up, you can see obviously that when her nose gets to the same size, it blows the eye set uh, distances apart. So it's not a person of interest that we would waste any resources on. Okay. So I'm so, just uh, gonna. I'm just going to show a couple that we showed the first night here. This one here will fall within the parameters of that we may need to look at. Uh, and just because the eyes and the nose length may be similar, there's other characteristics of, a, of this suspect that are known or reported to police of, of what we're looking for. It's going to be anything from body build to hair color to not having blue eyes. Um, so there's, you know, there's a lot of information out there of who do we include, who do we exclude, who do we uh, put on the back burner, and who most critically do we put our resources towards to start with? Because when the trail's hot, we got to stay on that and uh, run it and uh, run that rabbit to ground as hard as we can. All right. So, Frank Meister, do we want to start with yes. nights? panel here okay who who are we starting with the first picture that uh is on your list uh give me initials please <laughs> se no we're doing him last yeah i've got him numbered as a poe uh point person of interest from uh uh, uh one uh, oh, uh, from see. eight to sixteen okay hang on if you go Number to eight. my lineup part two. Yep, I got it. All right. This gentleman here, 34 year old male from Peru, Indiana, but lives in Vegas now. Military war veteran. And as far as I can see in uh, research, that he has no criminal record. And mind you, this gentleman went to Vegas with uh, Keaton Klein. Okay, when you look at it, most certainly the uh, nose lengths and the eye sets 
follow within the parameters um, that uh, we, we put some resources through. And, and of course, uh, it's not the final just this, it's other characteristics that we would look at, but most certainly he would be a person that uh, you couldn't absolutely exclude just from those measurements. So we'd be putting some resources towards him. Okay. Number nine. 47 year old male, Delphi, Indiana, a passenger, no criminal record. This individual would be on the outside parameters, uh, his eye sets. Um, and there's something about, uh, when I did the mirror image, I could be off a little bit on the uh, width, the set of the eyes and the nose width a little bit, because it can have some influence that when you're doing the mirroring, wherever you decide that you, you want to overlap those two images can affect the, uh, uh, the outside distances or uh, whatever points of measurements you want on the width. But, and so we have to have certain parameters out there because there's going to be some variance, some influence on my part, which is not going to be the case so much on the length versus the uh, width of the eyes. So he'd be on the outside parameters. He, uh, does he have blue eyes? Yeah, yes. it's got eyes. Yes. Okay, so we would include that. So if he has the blue eyes and we have one witness, which doesn't mean that he doesn't have blue eyes, but one witness most definitely, and it's been highly, uh, I think it was released by the uh, law enforcement also a time or two that he didn't have blue eyes. Uh, I'm, I think, I'm not sure on that, but is that hey, true Fink. or not? Hey, Fig, can you correct us on that? On what point? Uh, the color of the eyes of uh, BG. So there's one person, one of the witnesses said that the eyes are absolutely, they don't know what color they are, but they're absolutely not blue. Okay. Right. That's what the okay. Guys said oh, go thing. ahead. That's what the flannel shirt guy said the same thing, too. He couldn't re remember what kind of color his eyes was. Okay. So does anybody on the panel have anything they want to say about the first couple of guys that we've talked about here? The second guy is a very, uh, very interesting guy. I mean, I think me and Fig have talked about it a couple of times. He's a very interesting person to look into. Like I said, he ended up going to Vegas with uh, Keegan Klein, and I want to know why he went to, to Vegas with Keegan Klein. You're talking about this guy. Yes. And it's been rumored and been talked about that the first BG most likely has some type of military training of some sort, hunting experience, uh, anything that has to do with the woods. He knows his way around the landscape from uh, training in the military. So, yeah, this person, I guess you say, his friend one and um yeah I, I don't know so he i don't know if he went to vegas with him but he did live he, he was a roommate to well he lived next door to tony klein um he was he lived in vegas with keegan klein for a little bit and um i don't know yeah to me i think he's a little seems a little thinner than the weight requirements um but who knows he he um he was allegedly um, interviewed by police and they did DNA test on him and they cleared him and he hasn't been in contact with police for a few years, I guess, ever since they they told him he was cleared with DNA. So that's kind of recent news. So, okay. yeah. Now, Chris, Chris did some um, uh, excellent work of trying to recreate what Bridge Guy was uh, wearing and he bulked himself up uh, pretty well. Explain how you built yourself up to uh, about uh, above what your weight class would be. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I I got bad internet. What's that last part you said? I'm sorry. Of uh, of uh, when you uh, replicated what Briz uh, uh, guy was wearing uh, mm -hmm. during your videos, you built yourself up to look far heavier than what you actually are. Uh, what yeah. Was that process? Yeah. So um, now, obviously, I'm six three, so I'm going to be I'm going to look taller than the guy, but um, and I weigh about two hundred pounds. 
So I'm going to look a little bit skinnier, but I noticed that he looks he looks bigger than he, he really is. And I've always felt like he's wearing, uh, you know, at least a hoodie under there over with the windbreaker over it. And I, I did some control tests where I, I wore different accessories, different hats, different coats, different hoodies, uh, fanny pack. And um, yeah, it's in my opinion, it feels like he was wearing uh, multiple accessories. Um and uh, I always felt like because uh, if he would have after the murder, he would have blood on him. He could just uh, take that windbreaker, or whatever jacket, that first one, take it off. And if he had like a brown hoodie, this got, you know, it's pretty big and it's got those pockets that go through. You could just stuff that in there and still have room for everything else and just stick your hands in your pocket. And you could just walk along and no one would know. And it makes you look bigger. Yep. Okay. Definitely. Excuse me. All right, we ready to move on to number 10? Yes. I'm pretty sure everybody will know who this is. Yeah, I'm sure everybody knows Keegan Klein, 27 <laughs> year old male, Peru, Indiana, extensive criminal record, 30 charges, including child exploitation, child porn, obstruction of justice, identity deception. We all know he's in jail right now on all those charges, and we all know that uh, law enforcement has been hounding the hell out of him to give them information, and he's not budging a bit. Yep. If I only had to value him as a purpose, person of interest, just on his nose length and eye width, I most certainly would uh, include him that we put resources towards him as bridge guy. The resources they sent towards him is because he's a pedophile and uh, created the uh, uh, the shots uh, profile that uh, had contact with the uh, victims. Um, uh, he's an absolute trash of the world. There's a lot of uh, uh, descriptors I could add on to him for what he's done to other uh, children. But um, anyway, uh, if I just had to go on the eyes and nose length, he most certainly would be. Uh, I'm glad law enforcement got him for the other stuff, but I think his physical size uh, eliminates him on some levels. I, I, I think he's extremely heavy or something, isn't he? Oh, yeah. He was a big guy. Mm -hmm. yeah. Definitely a big guy. All right. So I wouldn't put a lot of resources towards him on the bridge guy, but uh, uh, kudos to law enforcement for getting him on the uh, what they've got him on. And and uh, I believe he, he's far more involved than uh, – and he had a, a great involvement in, uh, in uh, uh, what possibly happened to these girls. Exactly. So any other comments from the panel on KK? There's there, there's no way he can do things that him cross the creek in order to get up on the bank on Ron Logan's property and try to get out of there on Ron. Yeah, I think the BG is definitely has uh, is athletic to some degree. Yeah, so, that's that's what uh, I think. Also. And we, yeah, and we know from testimony and stuff, or uh, from the transcripts, uh, and from uh, the interviews from Murder Sheet uh, with the stepbrother or half brother, excuse me. He says that Keegan just was just indoors uh, in his room. Yeah, and Fig, uh, you probably know. Yeah, Fig, oh, you ahead. probably know more about Nancy shots thing than probably anyone uh, that I know of. Uh, what's your feelings about it? Well, back to the, the weight thing. Um, I'd say my, my claim to fame or whatever with this case is uh, idiotically stumbling across that the FBI uh, weight and height description got removed. It was the first <laughs> one because I, I was researching for a video and a week before, I did another video where I copy and paste it off the FBI website. And I'm like, oh, I want to make sure I get it right. So I went back on there and I was like, oh, my goodness, they they like removed the, the height and weight. They, so basically, then, they basically just removed all description of it. Yeah. Right. So but my point is they had it at 180 to 220 for a very long time. And yeah. so as I'm looking at witnesses or excuse me, as I'm looking at POIs, I like filter out if you're not between 180 and 220 and if you're not between 5'6 and 5'10 I'm not even gonna waste my time because there's hundreds of 
POIs in this. So I would always kind of stick in those parameters. So with friend one, he was weighed less than one. And I don't know how they came up with that, uh, the height and weight, but it's the information I had from law enforcement. And so Klein, he, he's too tall, apparently, and too heavy. Um, but I do think he's involved somehow, whether indirectly or directly. Maybe he gave. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I feel the same. Absolutely. He's playing it smart. Uh, I mean, playing it smart, not saying uh, saying a word because he don't want to be charged with this crime. Also, you know, because he way I look at it, he's trying to get a deal to where he can. If he's trying to get a deal, he's wanting a small deal and get out of prison where he's not spending the rest of his, his life in prison. That's just the way I feel about it. Uh-huh. Yep. Yeah. All right, let's go to number 11. Ooh. All right, Mr. Tony Klein, 54-year-old male from Peru, Indiana, extensive criminal record, uh, record of harassment, battery with bodily injury, theft, uh, numerous uh, traffic violations. Well, the genetics are obvious between father and son, and so they would have uh, uh, a connected uh, facial features that should be familiar, um, and so um, and uh, similar. And once again, you can see that the nose, hips, right length, the eye set distances are same. Um, so he most certainly would be a person of interest. Uh, the descriptors and everything else and uh, uh, actual movements through the crime scene would be something I have to consider. Uh, I think someone said he has some health issues and stuff. So okay. you have to weigh all the factors. Uh, uh, just because he fits one parameter uh, and one string of possibilities doesn't mean that he hits on all notes. So you have to weigh those factors whenever you uh, start uh, throwing resources out there. You see, like... Uh... We've discussed in previous uh, lives or videos. When we had the memorial walk back on the 26th of March, I actually, Marv went across the bridge down the hill where the girls supposedly went down the hill, but I went backtracked. I went through the woods there at the north end of the bridge, the terrain, the hills, I mean, everything out there my opinion on this the person that did this has to be basically a superman to do it yep. the current of the creek was running so fast i just don't see how one person can control two girls with the current like that and then get out of there like he did and that's why i'm having a hard time believing that he uh, actually went to the cemetery for his escape route Man, especially, I, I told uh, Frank Meister that it's going to be hard to train to get over there. Yeah. Um, yeah it, I mean, I'm, I'm six foot and weigh 215 pounds and very athletic and been in the military, and I had a hard time. And we did, I screened where Jennifer and Frank Meister was, and they could have heard, I heard, they heard me, but it was hard to hear Jennifer somewhat when she tried to scream and i was screaming pretty loud <laughs> all right anybody have anything else to say on tk oh uh, just quick question i forget did um i can't remember frank Meister. you said something might have happened because he's got diabetes did he have an yes. operation uh, from what I've been reading on his Facebook page, he was in the hospital getting ready to have his foot amputated. Oh, that's right. Okay. So. Interesting. All, All right. right. This gentleman, 46-year-old male from Ridgeville, Indiana. Uh, criminal record, he had possession of marijuana child exploitation and some minor traffic violations. Uh, does he have blue eyes? Uh, it looks like he might have a grayish color. Yeah, it's kind of like oh. a bluish gray. Or okay. a, uh, yeah. Well, most certainly just on the measurements and the, uh, because like I said, on the width of the nose, I could be off, um, you know, I'm human. And so you're having to do some guesstimation on the length of the nose. 
and the eye level, everything sets up that, yes, we'd be putting some resources towards him, uh, verifying a lot of, if he fits within the physical uh, characteristics of a bridge guy, we most certainly would be putting some, uh, uh, verifying some um, data on him. And also he's familiar with Delphi also. He was seen in Delphi either on the 13th or the 14th. Does anybody have any other information on this gentleman? All I know is that he was accused of killing his girlfriend. And I don't know if or whatever happened to that. I really didn't get into looking at him much. But I thought I'd bring him up because of his uh, criminal record, especially with the child exploitation charge that he had. Okay. Especially yeah, knowing the area of Delphi himself. So. Yeah, True Crime Jesus has an extensive video on this person. So if you're interested, I recommend checking that out. Okay. Exactly. Let me write that down real quick. All right. Got it. Everybody should know who these are on our panel. Now, this gentleman, rest his soul, 82-year-old man from Delphi. He had, uh, a, I wouldn't say a lengthy criminal record, but he had four DUIs. He had a couple DUIs within a month of each other and uh, some other minor traffic violations. That's about it. You can tell he's got a cataract problem on his right eye, so. Yeah. The uh, mirror image I did was from the left side, so um, the, um, um, and then bring it over. So everything you see is just left side doubled over and everything. But he follows, you know, you can look and see that uh, from the tip of the nose up to his eye level. His eyes are a little bit higher than what our bridge guy image would be on a one to one relationship. Um, uh, so um, I, knowing the characteristics and uh, what it would take, I haven't been there, but I have to take Frank's word for the uh, uh, amount of activity it would be able to manage those hills, uh, the amount of athletic skills it would take to uh, walk down that hill, uh, chase the girls if they made a run for it, or fight a, uh, uh, one of the uh, victims who uh, I believe was an athlete that um, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if he would be able to handle that. He may have been. I don't know how active of, of an uh, uh, individual he was at that age, but uh, I probably um, at this point would – you know, wouldn't put him and put a lot of resources on him. I want to answer a question before we go any further. Hey, Bruce, uh, the reason why we brought this gentleman up because the girls were located on his property and he was one of the gentlemen who had one of the first search warrants uh, when it came to this case. So no, he had the second one. Yeah. He was one of the search warrants. That's all I got to say. And we do, we had to bring him up, you know, and uh, if you can correct me, Fig, on this, uh, they cleared him after he passed away. Yes, and I found, yeah, he had, he has. And people ask, well, there's no evidence of that, but I, I looked and there's an article where they do say that he has been cleared. Okay. So, yeah, he's been cleared by, via law enforcement. Okay. All right, number 14. All right, gentlemen, 30 year old male from Peru, Indiana. Criminal record, DUIs, drugs, minor traffic violations. Fig, you going to, uh, yeah, after I get through with this, I'm going to be asking you a couple of questions about this young individual. Um, he most definitely fits within, well within the parameters. Um, this one and the next two, all of them fit well within parameters. And with this being said, that through these next few people we look at, that, um, uh, it's most important that we look at them all as persons of interest. We're not saying just because they're later in the show that they are the bridge guy, but they most certainly all carry similar characteristics. They are extremely close to what uh, the uh, enhancement of the uh, uh, bridge guy image from NASA has brought forth. Um, so he most certainly would be someone uh, I would put um, some interest into do some research and see if there's any contacts 
or anything that would lead me to believe that he may have possibly had contact with them. Dig, I think you can let us in on some of the information about that. Yeah, so just when I first received the 194-page document, I just picked up on that Country Club Road and thought it was really significant. So I was curious who lived on Country Club Road, and I was going on Tony Klein's Facebook and seeing who liked his pictures, who he was contacting with, kind of have a photographic memory. So I took some snapshots of, of names in my head, and then I went and found out who lived on Country Club Road. You could look that up, and I looked it up, and then there's a name that popped up, and I also remembered looking at you know Tony Jerry, Klein's father who passed yeah. away, Jerry Klein, and yeah, re- a bitch where, yeah, yeah, and realizing that the the maiden name on the mom side is Trexler. So uh, I just started putting things together, Country Club Road, and this person. I don't know if they're. I don't even. I don't know if they're BG. I think they have something to do with the alibi, with covering the alibi. That's what I think. You know the significant part about this gentleman here, his mother is the one that uh, owns the house on country club road and she's also the clerk for the miami county courts now is it possible that she's the one who accidentally or intentionally released the transcripts since she's the clerk for that court i i can see here she doing that mm. Mm. yeah someone let me, let me know that after i didn't know that and then that information i was like wow i don't Maybe. Yeah, I ran a background check on that address, and it came back to his mom. Her name is Rhonda. Yeah. It's very interesting. Very interesting. Mm-hmm. All right, next one. Um... Oh, yes. Here we go. 32-year-old male, Peru, Indiana. Criminal record, domestic battery, theft, possession of paraphernalia. And the significance about this gentleman here, we know that he was on the bridge on February 12th, and he also put himself there at the bridge on the 13th. We don't know if he's trying to talk police or if it's actual facts, but we thought we'd bring it up because there's a lot of things that he's done that just was, was an eye opener to us. As I've uh, been sent these these images and, and, and I've become more acquainted over the last four or five weeks of individuals and parts that they've played in investigations, this man here, he has issues mental issues but um and um most certainly he tried to um, um, place himself into the investigation which is if he is a um, rich guy he's of course a murderer and a piece of trash if he is um, someone who just wants to take resources from an active invas- investigation and waste investigators time and troll the world and troll police he's a piece of trash also I have no uh, feelings for this individual. Uh, either way, he's a bad guy. Either way, and uh, he wants attention, and um, and uh, he should have it. Uh, anyone that does one or two things, whoever killed these uh, young children, uh, they deserve everything that can happen to them. Anyone that takes resources away from law enforcement, hunting the killer of these young children, deserve to have anything that happens to them happen to them. But that's just my rant. But y'all can take over on this subject from here. And uh, to add that to this gentleman here, he also worked at Subaru and he works at the Department of Corrections. And the interesting part about this gentleman, he opened up a business there in Peru, which is only nine blocks from TK's house. And the funny thing about it is he expanded his business to Vegas. And when Steve looked into the Vegas company, it's no longer in, in open. I see a comment here about where someone says, I didn't know you knew these people before you did measurements. Um, unfortunately, um, as I did the measurements and as I've been involved in this case uh, and been asked to look at certain people, some of these persons of interest, 
I do have some background, uh, but does that change the measurements? No. Um, and so uh, there may be that I do know a couple, three of these guys. I probably, I probably, uh, I probably know them at least some details on about four of them. But it doesn't influence the length of his nose and his eye set if I know who his initials and his background. Uh, those things don't change with any of my knowledge about who he was as an individual. So, Steve, what is your your thought on this gentleman? Would he be somebody that you would throw resources at, or? Yes, uh, like I said, these last three images, if they all share common characteristics, I can do an overlay, which I'm going to demonstrate from what uh, 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 after we get through our next couple of, uh, uh, of persons of interest, and um, and talk about what uh, Chris did here with monsters on our bed, that, uh, that they, these individuals, and guys, uh, they share um, common uh, traits, characteristic facial uh, measurements. And so bridge guy, regardless, if there's someone that we've already covered that is in our list of person of interest or he's someone that we haven't covered all the evidence supports that he will have these traits and bridge guy will look very uh, similar to our persons of interest okay all right are we all ready for the last one well we got two we got uh the one that uh, fig sent us and then we have uh, the last one also. So whichever one y'all want to do on that. Um, what number is the one Fig sent you? Um, let's see. I don't know if the Fig did you send it to her also or just me? Um, I I thought I sent it to the group, the group email. So everyone um, was involved. Hang on one second. I could resend well, it. Well, she's searching for it. If you want to explain what his connection was. Yeah, so it was something that was sent. I know there was um, there was someone on one of Sleuth Lives when I was on Sleuth Live with them and would just say weird stuff. And we thought it was a troll at first, but they just kept saying oh, oh, there weird is. things. Yeah, yeah. there. That's him. And... It was a uh, gingerbread in man. Yeah. And now Bowie he's guy. in jail. Yeah. Mr. Yep. Bowie guy, yep. Delphi Sation. What's he in jail for now? And so Child molestation of a nine year old. I have it on my email. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. There's a lot of So this was just sent to me. The eyes, though, is what was. Uh, Catch my attention because of the gap between his eyes and his nose. Was fed. Mm -hmm. What? Do you know if the dog was fed? Yeah, she was. She got. Okay. So that's all about all I know is, is that. Okay. And when I saw it in the hat that he's wearing in the in the picture, it is like the hat that they drew of the old bridge guy sketch. He's wearing that yeah. exact same hat, and he does a lot of trolling and says inappropriate things and. At the very least, he he pretends he wants people to think that he's BG. He's done enough that I've seen, or he at least wants people to think that he's BG. And now, now he's in jail. Hmm. Excellent. And here I'll um. Just give me a minute here. So this is what Fig is talking about with the hat. Ivy hat. <clears throat> yep. I'm going to have to get his name. I'm going to do some extensive research on this guy. All right. Are we ready for the last one? The last one. Well, and, and did you say he fits within the parameters on that, on this last one? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. 
he would be someone that I would throw resources towards. It. Okay, thank you. Good find. Hey, Faith, can you send that to my uh, his name and everything to my uh, messenger, if you don't mind, please? Sure thing. I'll give it to you later, Frank. All right. The okay, last gentleman here. here. Everybody knows who this is. Thirty-one-year-old male from Delphi, Indiana. Former mayor. Now he's the chief deputy prosecutor of Carroll County. No criminal record whatsoever. Once again, he most certainly uh, falls within the parameters, but he also shares characteristics with other persons of interest. Um, and so we have to weigh that as uh, uh, what information we have on it. I, I know that there's a, 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 some interest in him, uh, but um, uh, he most certainly falls within the parameters of uh, what I would throw resources towards. Um, and um, it's not law enforcement. Only duty is to find a bad guy. Law enforcement's duty is also to, that if there is someone out there is being unjustly accused, it's just as much a burden to law enforcement to prove their innocence as much as is their guilt. Because, you know, uh, it's tough being a person of interest and being innocent um, because, you know, you're, you view that there's a lot of harm can happen in, the, in here. So when you look at these people, it's not saying that they are, but law enforcement, they have a duty that, uh, or they should uh, believe that they have a duty that's just as much uh, their uh, intent that if we can clear somebody, we put effort forward to get them off of it. That way we don't waste resources on them in the future. Because like I said, it's hard on anyone to be a suspect. And, um, but I have utmost confidence that, um, uh, that our bridge guy is gonna be sharing characteristics that's similar of, uh, of what these last three, especially, who were very close in in, uh, in physical or last four since uh, Fig sent the other one, that those would be people that uh, that when we do find Briz guy, I will not be shocked at all to see that he shares a lot of similar characteristics and facial features, eye set, uh, nose length, um, and uh, but uh, now and um, got one more little section I want to cover because uh, Chris uh, last night during his show, and I recommend y'all go watch Chris because I learn from him all the time. Uh, he's a, he has great intuition, um, has great initiative. He goes out there and does things that I, that saves me time. And, um, and I appreciate that. Uh, he also has uh, some great ideas. Uh, and um, Frank and I, a few days ago, were discussing uh, how we were gonna bring in to tell people that regardless of, uh, of uh, who Bridge Guy is, that uh, they, they're they going to be carrying similar characteristics. And how could we get that message out there so that people could understand? Well, in Chris's show last night, he brought out the point that let's uh, uh, take the uh, composite, the latest composite of the young guy, and let's do a side-to-side -side comparison of similar people, which is brilliant. Uh, and uh, and uh, so I said, okay, this is going to be interesting. And uh, and he was pointing on that the winner of uh, was uh, dead on. Uh, and he he came up with, uh, I believe everybody will know who this is. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and I, I'm almost positive he is not and was not on the Moon Island Bridge <laughs> on, on that date. But. When I did the nose comparison, the eye comparison, he falls within that parameter. It is human nature that when we see people in, in, in public, we often associate them with people that we know. Is it a cousin? Is it an uncle? Is it a brother, sister? Or, you know, even my three-year-old grandson, we was in the store, a toy store three days ago, and this older gentleman walked by, and he said, that looks like Papa, which is his great-grandfather. And um, and my look, and sure enough, so even at three, we have that built into us automatically that we associate faces with people that we know or we try to. And so what Chris's point is, is that he thought that if we looked at the newer um, uh, overlay of the second composite that was released, what, two or three years ago? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That, that uh, there's, you know, let's, let's see what it does. And um, I don't have his image of it, but I do have, um, if you would um, 
pull up the uh, CN overlay I sent you on the part two image file. Before we go any further, I watched uh, Fig's uh, live the other day with Skip on the escape route. So I started uh, looking around and I found that one of the gentlemen that we already looked at, the last one, his parents live a little over two miles from the Monon Bridge, northwest of the Monon Bridge. And you can walk straight through the woods to his parents' house. Mm. Walk the creek, like Fig was saying, across the creek where he needs to go through the woods to get to his parents' house. I'm not saying he's BG or anything. I, I'm just throwing that out there. That he live, the parents live close to where he can hide out. And maybe it might explain why he wasn't at the city council meeting on the 13th. And by the way, on Monday, I am going to call the clerk's office in Delphi and request that I get a copy of the minute sheet for the city council meeting that day and see if they forward it to me. Because from my understanding, there's some other creators out there who tried to request it and actually spoke to the uh, SE. And he sent them completely different copies of uh, the minute sheet that had nothing to do with the 13th. <laughs> and Frankmeister, the chat is saying to look into SE's brother also. Well, I know <laughs> about his uncle. I, I know about his uncle, so. Or is it his uncle, maybe? Yeah, yeah it's his uncle. I've seen uncle. <laughs> okay. That's funny, Vic. <laughs> <laughs> some people say I'm some, gonna, some mean things that you could just laugh sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do an overlay for Fig and uh, send it to him of uh, Reynolds over him, a transparency. <laughs> <laughs> My face will just be bigger, fatter. <laughs> oh, look at that. <laughs> oh. Wow. Um, that that wasn't the one I was uh, talking about, but... Uh, oh, the, yeah, that's the right. Yeah. yeah. But... That was a, a just overlay I did of those two individuals oh, wow. to show you that the similarities are are there, and that therefore, if the nose links and the eye sets, that regardless on each spectrum, that most people would look at this one individual and say there's no way that he is familiar with the other individual. But when you do the overlay, you can do it again. that I put one on top of the other. One of them I put uh, SE over top of uh, Reynolds and the other one I put there. The only thing is, is that the face broadness is a little bit different. But mm -hmm. uh, I just wanted to do that for that. But if you'll go to the part two image file of where I did the, uh, the composites, uh, the CN overlay, the CNR overlay, the composite uh, BG and the Reynolds. I'm looking. It's in the part two image file I emailed. And what is the name of it? Uh, part two image files. I sent them to you at 10.09 a.m. this morning. Now I'm going to do something like that for a fig, too, to see if, uh, how close he is to Reynolds. <laughs> Uh, it's all right. Don't waste your time. It's all right. <laughs> oh, no, I've got it all set up now. It only takes a minute. <laughs> okay, Steve, I'm having a little, little trouble. I took all the emails and I put them into a folder. Do you know what the file name was? Part two image file is the name of the file. It would have the bad guy NASA 1A in it that you brought up earlier. And then beside it, it has the uh, composite black and white of the younger um, bridge guy. All right, one second here. Nope. It's in that same file, I believe. There you go. Oh, yeah. Uh, this is the uh, actual uh, uh, NASA transparency of uh, that I laid over to uh, show you that whoever did the composite from years ago uh, for law enforcement, I did a measurement of what NASA looks like, and it fits perfectly over the profile. 
um, or, or over the uh, uh, composite and uh, with nose wet and eye set. So uh, uh, I can see whereas if law enforcement had uh, new technologies that came out that they were able to enhance that picture and they created something such as I did with the uh, mirror image that maybe this is something that gave that first composite some more weight that we should bring it up and look at it and uh, give it some more weight than what it was five years ago because five years ago we're just looking at everybody we have a composite of somebody that was uh, i don't know how far three quarters of a mile or i don't know the distance but it was a great distance when this person was spotted than from uh, where other uh, people were spotted but now if you'll do the uh, next one the cnr overlay the the bottom image transparency was uh of course the composite of the young bridge guy and i kept my image in there of the uh, nasa image laid over and then i included uh mr reynolds over the top <laughs> and you can see the hairline is spot on the noses lay over each other the eyes lay over each other and the chin lays over each other uh, so all credit wow. is given to mr uh, uh chris here and monster under the bed that was brilliant sir um and uh, so that we can tell people that is this absolutely going to be what bridge guy looks like that he's going to have this maybe not but it's going to, there's going to be definitely similarities because uh from the mirror image i did from bridge guy walking across the bridge who has similar jawline facial features to what i did with the mirror image from the nasa uh, that is all is supportive of each other uh, that you see certain characteristics in one to the next and um, so that when you go out there and you do look at someone, if it strikes a nerve or, or brings back a memory of that you met someone that day and they remind you, you of a family member, most certainly let's look at those people and uh, report them to law enforcement because that's all it is, is that law enforcement stated that there's someone out there that has one small clue that will break this case. It's going to break the alibi. It's going to break something. Randy had a small clue that no one knew about. He had a NASA image that I didn't know about, Fig didn't know about, Chris didn't know about, Frank, none of us knew about other than uh, this. Is this going to be the one that breaks it? I, I, I don't know. I hope it helps. But someone else out there will eventually come forward and, and, and offer and break that alibi, as what Fig said in his video which is a good video about breaking the alibi uh, and um but uh that's pretty much all i had uh or, or the part i played in this uh episode so y'all have at it so i just tipped in ryan reynolds right now <laughs> <laughs> and, then, oh, I feel and, terrible. And, and then also what i figured out is if you guys are trying to call me bridge guy i think i figured out because you're like all right it's uh ryan reynolds is the uh, the new guy sketch and might have changed appearance uh, gained weight, got fatter, and then, you know, so now it's me. But no, I'm not, I'm not the bridge guy, I'm not the sketch or anything. But that's great work, Chris. Oh, it's thanks, buddy. That's awesome. Yeah, absolutely. But it's just, it's, it's amazing how two concepts from two different people have the same idea and they run parallel with each other. He approached it from one angle, I was approaching it from another angle, but they, actually support each other that the composite supports that this is what bridge guy looks like uh, the um, mirror image i created uh supports that to the composite that this is what bridge guy looks like at some point coincidences quit of being coincidence they become that this is something that is supported and something that we should consider with great weight hmm. And it sounds like we have one more picture for you, Steve. I'll have to to get uh -oh. that, find that, oh, and then send it to you. Uh, I've been if you would, I pulled up, and this has may not, uh, but I sent it to a fig of the NASA thirty. It's in the uh, lineup part two, maybe. Do you have it? It's the what? NASA 30 uh, image. 
So you may or may not have it. I I, I think I included it in the. Uh, I do have it. All right. I've been working on the uh, image that uh, Randy sent me, and I went out and started uh, enhancing a little bit more, bringing up some more, got some more of the forehead in. What this does is, is that does it give any credit to the uh, composite? Of course, the nose length and the eye set uh, most certainly gives you an eyebrow, um, gives you a brow line on it, gives you part of the forehead. And the reason I brought up this point here is that in forensics, there are certain people out there that have certain skills in uh, being able to uh, reconstruct facial features, whole facial features from partial skulls or partial images. And um, hopefully uh, technology, if it's not there yet, eventually they'll be able to rebuild that face. They already do. Um, uh, there, there's technologies out there that they've come along with in the last few years, of whereas uh, you can rebuild a face from just a few clues of bone structure. Um, because mm -hmm. it's in our DNA. But anyway, I just wanted to bring that up as a side point, and hopefully our uh, uh, technologies, as they grow and get better, that uh, law enforcement be able to um, uh, give us some more uh, details. Yeah, and he sent me some information about facial reconstruction, so I'm going to look into that here it's amazing stuff it is mm -hmm. and well um thank you everyone i gotta run but it was an honor it's nice to meet you chris and talk to marvelous and steve and randy everyone frank so thanks for coming. We, we yeah. appreciate you thank you so on, much man. big yeah thanks i Vic. appreciate y'all and thanks chat you guys rock we'll talk later all right all right well, good night buddy I'm going to go eat. I can't skip a meal. You know that. So I'm, yeah, it's go. all, right. I'm sure it's also family time for you, too. So. Yeah. All right. All right. Our next uh, show is going to be is, uh, <laughs> is Fig Bridge Guy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the connection. Yep. So, Chris, I'm going to put you on the spot. What do you think of all these photos and Oh, he's done. Oh, it's amazing work. Now, I'll be honest. Um, when it comes to actual POIs, this is, um, I think I told you in the email, this is probably my yeah. weakest um, area as far as the Delphi. I've always uh, uh, been approaching it at different angles. I just haven't really had the time to, you know, dig into the POI, uh, you know, persons of interest. Um, so, like I said, this is kind of my, my weakest area, sadly, but it's interesting and I'm, I'm trying to get caught up here. Um, I'm still, like I said, I'm still learning these but it's it's great to be on this panel and i i just love how we're we're just kind of working off each other and like i said yes. this 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 matching the celebrities thing just kind of popped in my head the other day um because uh i I've, I've done on my show i've uh done like uh just shows where we kind of look at uh, sketches versus you know composite sketches versus the actual person that was caught you know and you know mm -hmm. they, there was a statistic that is apparently they're like nine percent accurate so like one out of every 10 sketches you know right on and but i noticed right. when i was looking at like ted bundy's his was most of it was way off except for the where his hair is parted it was yeah. it was perfect and so that that would stick out to me i'd be like oh my gosh look at that part in his hair i would you know familiarize with that um and then same with richard ramirez his face completely off but the curly hair I would see that and I'd be like, oh, you know. So I'll tell you, and, I'll tell you the yeah. best one is the I-65 killer, the composite sketch. With the lazy dead, eye. The dead on. They were dead on with that guy. Yeah. The lazy eye gave it away. Yeah. It's um the only thing is the it just made him look older with the beard, you know. Yeah. So I think people are probably thinking older guy, older guy, and it's too bad they, you know, but yeah, or they would have probably nabbed him earlier but uh yeah, yeah so anyway exactly. uh so yeah then i moved on to celebrities because i um i've been told i look like certain celebrities and i just um you know we always like uh steve was saying we we associate and we familiarize with other things and so that was kind of the approach awesome so i have one question for you while we have you um i know that you're going to go out and do some more tests and um 
things like that. Have you, one of the subscribers on our last video asked if you had thought about doing anything with shadows. Oh, um, yeah, I, um, as far as like, um, working with like different areas and angles, is that what you're saying? Is that what they're asking? I, I think so. I got to try find to... the question again. And okay. Then so probably, you. probably filming at the right, about the same time of day as the incident I'm assuming, and then trying to be mm -hmm. in the walking the same. So what, um, what well, they're walking, be, he would be walking east. Which way does the bridge go? North and south. south. North, north, north and south. south. Okay. Yeah. So, so walking I, to the south. South. Okay. All right. Yeah. I was gonna turn. But yeah. So I, I need to do that um, and write some of all these uh, so I can get that shadowing just right. That's actually a great question. And before I go out and film, I'm going to do like a, a video and get people's, um, you know, uh, you know, yeah, thoughts and stuff that Opinions we can. Opinions and thoughts. Yeah, it's awesome. exactly. Yeah, get a list going that I can do. Um, and so, yeah, I'm excited. Uh, I'm going to do that. And then I'm also going to do the phone thing where I'm going to take an iPhone, put it, uh, actually have an actor and have her put it in her pocket because I'm curious about uh, the recording myself. Because um, I, I feel like, because with an Android, when you hit record, there's a button to the left that pops up that pauses a video. But I've noticed with iPhones, you just have the uh, record button and you can stop and record with the volume up and down buttons but there's no pause button unless someone wants to correct me. But from what I've seen on the HUDs, there's just record and stop. If you would okay. Yeah. Chris, can I uh, ask you to do something for me whenever uh, uh, get in touch with me? Because, oh yeah. Uh, we're about to do a, a, a video next week. Uh, I believe if, uh, uh, if uh, Frank has his way of what he wants to do next week on this next one. Um, and, um, there will be something that uh, you'll find highly interesting. And uh, if you want to uh, uh, include that in it, I'd appreciate it. Um, I've already uh, created it in a uh, my uh, uh, testing area, but I haven't went mobile with it. And it would be interesting if uh, we had the, uh, a mobile version of it also of the control. And uh, I'd appreciate that. I'd be honored to. Okay, is the panel ready to take some questions? Most definitely. Oh, yeah. All right, I am searching because I know I've seen some, but I went to the top and I'm scrolling down. Um, so I met all the hellos. <laughs> Scrolling, scrolling. Um, Curly J says, just turned it, tuned in. How is everyone doing tonight? Happy Easter. Um, Happy Easter to you. <clears throat> let's see. Oh, that is neat. Saw the Van Gogh exhibit yesterday, so with that in Ukraine, I thought that was cool. Ooh, that'd be cool. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. They got donations for the guy who made that painting. Um, Curly says, "Nice haircut, Frank Weister. Looks good, buddy." Appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Been out of the military 30 years and still wear it like a military man. Um, let's see here. This feeling is like a child waiting to open a gift under the Christmas tree. Excitement here. <laughs> <laughs> I oh. love Lady M. Lady M was my first um, member that supported my channel. And uh, oh. so she's, she's very dear to me because um, she's... Like I said, your your first member uh, is just something you know, I'll never forget, and that doesn't that's, take away from everybody else that's been a member um, and's joined. But like I said, that's just something she's she's a true supporter uh, for true crime. Awesome. <clears throat> Gloria S says, "Why is LD not using this photo?" 
they probably got a lot of different photos they don't want to use for some reason. But like Frank said, uh, he saw that more you can see in details with this uh, photo NASA had, and why not? Well, I'm sure that they're going to go back. There's going to be people that submit this information that we've created. They're going to put professionals on it. And they're going to go back and they're going to say and look at it. And I hope they do. And I hope they create something that makes mine look like uh, a Crayola uh, uh, that I created on a piece of cardboard. Uh, I hope they put the efforts towards that and they do something. And I hope everyone else out here, uh, like I said, everyone knows certain people in certain industries that can uh, work, work miracles. And I challenge all of y'all to go out there and, and have an impact on this case. Bring it forward. Yes. Make us, you know, if I'm wrong on this stuff, prove I'm wrong, and 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 I'll sit back and, and clap my hands. Whoever creates the perfect image that breaks the case, I'll give it everything I got to you, uh, uh, and uh, congratulate you on a great job. But we need to put that effort forward. These children deserve it. These families deserve it. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, most certainly, this criminal deserves whatever justice we can bring to him. Yes. Oh, yeah. So for this next question, I'm going to bring back up this picture. So am I seeing letters in the hat or whatever he's wearing? Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> there, yes, there are some letters there. there. I believe that's from the uh, test file. It's called watermark. Yeah, yeah. They're, 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 they're doing this. They're, 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 they're uh, uh, like you said, doing a watermark so that uh, that as it goes through the evidence line, that this is something that they created. It went into evidence or or went into a a, a findings report that they forward on down the trail. That if they look at it, they can see if it's been um, uh, anyone else has uh, touched it. Yep. All right. I cannot believe I kept thinking how much that pick reminds me of JP, and I was never a believer concerning his involvement. He's involved one way or the other, either by taking resources away from an a, a, a investigation or uh, by interjecting himself. He, he, he put himself in that role, and like I say, uh, um, he'll get no uh, quarter from me. Yeah. yeah. Um, BG has a headband on and sticking out is the handle of a garrot used to kill or choke victims. We don't know. That. I'm not seeing that, but. Oh. There's no garrot or anything mentioned in this case. But yeah, with that the it, with it being so far back, and if you're newer to the case, you're, you're going to see a lot of things. If you're you know, right, if you haven't really studied it. Um, yeah, I could imagine people see all sorts of things, and so. <clears throat> and Sandy Ridgeway, one of my members, says, "Hey, at Chris, <laughs> you have a great show as well. Yeah. Thank you for being here tonight." Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Sandy. Um, yeah. <laughs> Did inquiry, she says, has this person ever been a POI? So I must have missed something here. Oh. LMR is who she's talking about. So, okay. And I got a feeling Did I know who she's talking about. LMR from the USP channel. I'll have to check that out. Uh, Curly G, we will look into this um, and we'll give Steve a picture. Hmm. You talking about uh, PB, Curly J? No. Well, he's a family -E. member. 
D E. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. and as a matter of fact, I got into it with another creator at like three o'clock this morning. He was using PB as bridge guy, and I said, "Look, man, it's blatantly obvious the dudes you've got a reddish brown type hair." And when I looked at pictures of PB back in 2016, the dude's got gray hair and a gray beard. So in one year, I don't think his beard would change back to a reddish brown. <laughs> <laughs> Judy says, how would you remember the eye color of someone that you passed or spoke to briefly while out walking in a public setting? I keep hearing how BG does not have blue eyes. But is that just speculation or speculating? To me, I think whatever the distance between these people, they probably wouldn't be able to see his eyes. Um, it just depends on how far apart these people are. But if they're looking uh, at each other eye to eye, they should be able to know what color his eyes are. Uh, from an investigative standpoint, this would have been a question I would have asked of the witness. If, if the witness said this individual has reddish brown hair, knowing that there's only a certain amount of population which we covered in part one, this is that uh, uh, statement, that only one or two percent of the population has a red, reddish brown hair, of, and only 17 percent of the population has blue eyes. So with those two traits put together, that narrows the field of people that have those two characteristics. As an investigator, someone told told me, uh, he came into my store, he robbed my store, he was redheaded. Knowing that fact, uh, I would look at him and say, one of my first questions would be is, uh, did he have blue eyes? If he tells me, oh, most definitely he did, that narrows my field of people to look for because it's such a rare trait. But no, I, I don't I know if this is a directed pointed questions so they would have asked, but it may have been, and that's how come it's out there. And it's so prominent of a fact that why would you even make that statement? It may have just been the answer to a directed question. I don't know, but that most certainly is a possibility. But I do want to add in there the 16 year old young lady that supposedly said that BG looked square at her and it scared her. If he looked square at her and she felt scared of him, she would have noticed his eyes. We did, uh, Fangirl, we did a compare with KK. <laughs> Yes, he follows within the parameters that you would put resources towards him just on the measurements. Uh, but I believe there's some physical characteristics that uh, might uh, exclude him. But uh, that'd be for, but for my part, of it, I wouldn't exclude him just on the uh, eyes and nose dimensions and measurements. Okay, let's see here. Has everyone watched the captain's new video? It's something to think about. True? Um, let's see here. Not I, not yet. I will. Yeah. <laughs> so many viable suspects. Yep. Teresa says, bet my life there's more than one involved, at least two or three. Yeah, French, I do agree that there was multiple people involved in this crime. Somebody would have had to go out there and uh, basically scoped out the area. Then you had people watching out, lookouts. I just don't see a single individual kidnapping two girls when there were supposedly, what, 10 to 20 people out there at the trails that day? How do we know these people weren't all involved in the crime or participated right. in some, some way, shape, or form? Um, Sandy says, how did BG get to the end of the bridge so quickly? 
he's walked it uh, probably a million, million times. Mm -hmm. And he knew that it was going to be a dead end for them and they're going to be turning around. So he knew exactly where to step, where not to step. You know, he just knew it. Mm -hmm. He knew it very well. Especially having his hand uh, kind of like close to his, his pocket. pockets. Yeah. yeah. There's a couple of investigative possibilities that we would look at from the uh, standpoint as investigators. Was there anywhere, of course, there's only two ways that he got on that bridge. Either he came in from the uh, north end trailhead side, or he uh, popped out of uh, and came onto the bridge from the south end side, passed the girls, evaluated the situation, turned around, decided to make contact. Um, Whenever you're looking at uh, any type of a uh, crime that there's been some type of uh, ambush or contact that you have to look at, is there any place where someone could hide and observe people and stay out of view? Um, with the photos being so limited out there, of course, you just can't hide in a uh, wood line because you're extremely suspicious. But at the ends of the bridges where they slope off, are there any shadow areas where someone could sit, stand, and uh, be able to watch somebody coming from a, a, a great distance across the bridge and maintain concealment until someone got within the uh, inner, the first parts of what they uh, uh, start acting as a, uh, uh, making contacts, evaluating the situation, disposing theirself, that you let someone enter into that ambush zone, do you come out? And of course, either they have to turn and immediately retreat or they'll continue on and you bypass them. So um, we'd have to consider that as an investigator and go look at the uh, up under the bridges on both ends of them and see if there was a recent um, uh, signs of someone that possibly was uh, using those as observation areas. Or he may have just simply been standing at the other end of the bridge in the wood line and when they uh, came across. I mean, but you have to all consider all those facts. Yeah. Support with stuff that says, I don't, I do not see how they walked through the current after seeing it in March. It was totally different than me. I would have to agree with her because it was her, uh, another guy and a girl from Michigan. We took the trail from the North end all the way over to where the girls were located and stuff that will, will verify this. It was horrendous trying to get over to the hills, the ravines, the terrain. It was, it was very difficult. And like she said, the current of the creek that day couldn't have been no yes. different than back, back uh, in 2017. The weather was about the same, but it was just a little overcast, maybe a little bit chillier, you know, and I have a problem with them walking across the creek myself. I do too. Because we watched uh, Adventures with Mike. Is that his name? Yeah. Adventures with Michael. And they walked the creek and they had a hard time just by themselves because of the current. Mm. Well, yep. current as really victims, if, as being victims, if there are possibility being pursued, adrenaline. Form, yes. People, so will, people will do and they'll run through anything yep. they'll run through flames they'll run through fire they'll run through cross rivers they'll do anything to escape what's uh chasing them in the pursuit i was and just gonna I've say seen that. It, i've seen it many many i've seen it hundreds of times but whereas i've been chasing criminals and some of the things they would do uh, i saw a man dive through a plate glass window cut himself all the pieces just to get away from it and so people will do some uh, whatever they have to do to, to escape at times. And uh, is that the scenario with these young victims? It could be. Uh, don't know. Uh, the investigators know. Uh, they processed the scene. They know what it was. They know if the bodies were sold. They know if the uh, clothing has uh, uh, clay residue in it from where they climbed. They know what the hands, they know what's under the fingernails. If those girls climbed that uh, muddy bank, uh, there's all kind of indicators that if you're climbing banks and stuff that you're going to get cut and scratches, you're going to embed uh, 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 sediments under your fingernails, the investigators know those facts. And that's something that the uh, uh, bridge guy uh, wouldn't have cleaned up. And uh, But that's all part of the investigative process. And we'll never know until court exactly what they have. 
<laughs> Kathy S says, how do we know for sure they went down the hill? From my, we don't. from the information that I've gathered, they are, this is what was rumored or what was said is down the hill, there was some disturbance, like you could see slide marks or whatever going down the hill. And I'm sure there was some type of a disturbance or dirt on the private drive, from my understanding. And then you had a shoe. Yeah. Right. And footprints. Yeah. And the phone being found right off the prop, uh, the private drive down the hill going toward the creek. Yep. Was that a, a SE or a iPhone 5? Uh, iPhone 5, I believe. Okay. Yeah, okay. Okay. If so much happened under the bridge, why was it not a secondary cordoned off crime scene for a number of days? With all that blood, etc. Why was it? Why weren't forensic teams there? Well, you got to remember the first day, they didn't know what they were getting into. They didn't know if the girls had just got lost. They didn't know what was going on. Their main purpose was just to get people out there to search for the girls. Somebody, they, they don't know if the girls were hurt or whatever the circumstances might be. But like I said, Sergeant Holman of ISP made it very clear the first day they did the search, they walked up and down the bank of the creek until it got dark and what really bothers me the most is that that day they didn't find anything and all miraculously the next morning when they started to search again they find undergarments under the bridge is that because the clothes floated up the creek toward the wabash river or were they placed there that was one of the reasons we looked at that photo of Cheyenne. We were yeah. looking to see what's down there. So that was like in the river under the bridge? Is that what you're saying? Like the clothes would have? Yes. Oh, yes. Interesting. Yeah. Well, interesting. Where the logs are uh, next to that support beam. Uh huh. And okay. that's where we were, me and Shane was looking. And that's why we were looking to see where's the clothes at. And we couldn't find any. So it's like, and that's when he ran into possibly seeing another person on the north end of the bridge underneath. Mm -hmm. mm. Which kind of makes sense to me because if 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 our, our our mindset is right, we believe there are just multiple people involved in this. And if that's the case, there had to have been lookouts. Because you don't know who's gonna come out to the out to there on the day off from school and want to walk the bridge and and another thing is, is that people were being deterred away from the north end of the bridge. Why? Why were they being deterred away from the end of the bridge like uh, Derek German when he ran into FSG? And he said he heard two people at the bridge, but why did Derek go the opposite direction and go toward the 505? As we know, we when seeing Libby and Cheyenne's photo, there was so nobody at the north end of the bridge. Yeah, that's what another thing that really got my eye is if there was that many people out there, according to uh, Libby's sister, 10 to 20 people out there, and her photo, Libby's photos, and Cheyenne's photos, you don't see anybody in the background anywhere. Nope. Hmm. Interesting. And trust us, we searched and we searched and we searched and we couldn't find nobody. That's what's making me think, are these people involved that, that were out there and they were hiding themselves? I mean, when you're still in the dead of winter and you get 50 degree weather, that would have brought everybody and their mother out to enjoy the weather for the day. Oh, especially bike riding, walking. Right, you know. Yeah. And... And there it is. We see two photos, especially Libby's two photos. No one in the north end, no one in the south end, no one in the north end when Cheyenne took off the second platform. 
than where she took a photo of the killer walking past those two trees. There was no one on the bridge at, at that time either. So it's like, where are these people? Yep. So French says UAP research has the best pics of BG. Why are you not using them? Well, we don't take other people's information um, and and just use it. Um, we are doing our own investigation, um, so we are using what we've come up with. That's my answer on that one. Uh, I'll, I'll explain a little bit more to that. Just like when me and Marv and Randy did the uh, thing on the uh, geocaching and all that stuff a couple mm -hmm. months back, we actually contacted the creator and he gave us permission. We just don't take anybody's information, whatever they're using on their, on their, on their channel and use it without permission because that's a copyright infringement right there. Just like the situation with monsters under our bed. We approached him first before we decided and see if it was all right with him to use his uh his demonstration that he used for bg we just don't do that we just don't want to use information from everybody else's channels showing well you guys are just copying from everybody else that's the farthest thing that we're trying to do we're creating our own theories our own methods our own information and I suggest everybody else do the same thing. I mean, everybody's still stuck on this TKKK thing. I mean, you, everybody's got to work together. But like Steve explained to me when it comes to law enforcement, when there's a homicide, all the detectives are brought together. Each of them basically are handed a piece of paper, which is a rabbit hole. You follow that rabbit hole until it's dead. But one person who's got the right rabbit hole is going to have the correct person, the correct information, Whatever, whatever he comes up with. So Sam says Ellie has said they everything they need, but the individual they need someone to come forward and say this is the individual, the individual that committed the murders is not in the system. Steve, what is your take on that? Well, if I say he's not in the system, it's just a, you know, uh, he had, uh, he's probably committed crimes before. He's just never been caught. Uh, you just don't go out and murder two innocents on a spur of a moment without some type of mental break or some past history. Um, there's something that had to um, escalate this into it. Was it catfishing? Did the girls see something that they weren't supposed to see that day? Was it? you know some type of uh, revenge or was it just a a nut that uh was you know uh, in the area at the time we know he was a nut uh for a fact regardless because you just don't kill two innocent children for no reason um uh, so uh, but uh, they just don't have him in the system he doesn't have dna he doesn't have a past history similar crimes that they know of uh he may be in the system but he's already, he's in the system uh, as unidentified, and uh, so uh, and it's hard linking up cases sometimes because as criminals commit crimes, sometimes uh, uh, the the uh, mo will change, um, and uh, sometimes they become more violent. And uh, there's a lot to uh, investigations other than saying that it's really just this simple. You start with who's in the system, and then you work your way out. Uh, and they may have enough evidence to eliminate everybody in the system. I don't know what DNA they have. Uh, but uh, if they have uh, any DNA that's uh, reliable, eventually it will. Uh, either technology will catch up, and they will put him in jail from that, just like they did with the Golden State Killer. And with, uh, I think, uh, Zodiac was... Uh, uh, they've made great uh, accusations against a certain family uh, that they've discovered who Zodiac was due to DNA. But, um, hmm. but uh, I hope that's going to be the case on this case. Did Essie's mom work in the prosecutor's office at the time of the murders? I've heard that. I would have to look more into that. 
Chris, what do you think is going to, how do you think the case is going to be resolved? Oh, um, so three ways, either doing something like this and we'll, we'll get a good tip, you know, out of working together, um, which uh, I think could be a good possibility, detective work, or um, the other one is DNA, which I, um, I think this case will be solved if it isn't through uh, us all coming together. Uh, DNA is going to catch up to this guy. And I'm going to include one more. It's going to be the jailhouse rat that's going to, that Ooh. already knows about the, the uh, crime, and he's going to step forward to save it's his butt and say, I'll give you a deal. Uh, mm. uh, we I, got, this, I got two and, people they're, they're probably talking to already. Yeah. And, well, uh, actually but, three. Uh, there's so many crimes that are uh, cleared up in that manner. But they carry a lot of baggage because those uh, jailhouse rats, uh, uh, they have a hard road to carry when they testify in court uh, because they recognize for what they are that you have this information about certain crimes and you just let it ride until it benefited you. And, mm -hmm. um, but uh, anyway, but uh, I absolutely agree with what uh, Chris said there. I believe that. So those are the three primaries. And, um, and I just threw in a fourth one just for good measure. Mm hmm. Yep. So vid inquiry says, here's a question for the entire panel, please. Why couldn't they just get the original video from Libby's iCloud and download it to the computer? We would have better quality. Was iCloud around five years? I have no idea. Well, she, yeah, it was downloaded on. Um, when she was doing the video, it was downloaded on her iCloud at that time. But again, the distance between where she was standing and filming, and especially how good of the picture is, knowing some of you people have saw me filming in the tree lines and it was kind of getting blurry and stuff. So it probably could be hard enough to not get what they need. Okay. Um, Lady M says, oh, so the recording could have continued, Chris? So I, I just, like I said, I've had a theory that, because uh, um, uh, like I said, it just bothers me that they say that it's 43 seconds. Now, I, I had a question for Steve. Can they lie about that and, and bring that out? Can they lie about the time and something like that? Uh, courts have found that law enforcement can say anything, even to a criminal, uh, during interviews and mm -hmm. uh, misdirect, lie to. Uh, they don't we don't carry the burden that we have to be truthful during that. It's very powerful information that when you bluff people or you're interviewing people and uh, you mislead and you catch them in lies, because sometimes they'll correct you that uh, why did you still um, say a, a, a chainsaw? And they said, no, it was a leaf blower, which, okay, they corrected me. They were correct. It was a leaf blower. It wasn't a chainsaw. And, and so uh, criminals are not the, uh, um, <laughs> the brightest candle in uh, the church sometimes. But, uh, but uh, yes, you can lie to them. You can misdirect. And, no, uh, uh, my, uh, I'm sorry. My question is for the public when they release something, like they, they say, okay, we have a 43-second clip. That's kind of like evidence. Can they lie about the 43 seconds? Let's say they got two minutes worth. But can they say 43 min or 43 seconds? That's not a lie. They have 43 seconds. Oh, okay. They just All didn't right. tell you about the other. Interesting. Interesting. I, uh, Interesting. I watched another creator a couple months ago, and they were pretty adamant about this. They believe, uh, they were told there's an extra 10 minutes of audio. Yeah. They just omitted information. Mm -hmm. they, didn't, they didn't lie that and say that this is what we have and this is all we have. They just yeah, I... 
Yeah, and just to, to finish that is I one of my theories is I think when after he says down the hill, I think uh, just a theory is I think Libby was maybe uh, kind of had her hand in her pocket and maybe was trying to call somebody, you know, uh, and so maybe stopped the recording and started a new one. That's just kind of been a theory. I, I'm something I'm going to be doing. Absolutely. Yeah. And Jane from the country, why did you not look at Sonny's POI as BG in the faces tonight? We did that in part yeah. one. Yeah, part one. So you'll have to go back to part one to see that. See, Shannon was asking the same question. So. Yep. Is there going to be a part three? Because there's a lot of people missing that were actually there. Well, if you would like a part three and you know of other people that we should do, send those names to Marvelous Investigates um, at gmail.com and we'll find the pictures and send them to Steve and then we can do a part three. Yeah, I've actually got two myself um, that I've awesome. kind of kept in my back pocket and this is a perfect <laughs> time to do it. So All right. Sure. So I take it, Chris, we hadn't covered your two? Uh, I, one for sure I know you haven't. I, I got to check the other one, but I'm pretty sure both of them are new. All right. And I've got a couple that have been emailed to me already, so we're going <laughs> to keep you busy on this one, Steve. <laughs> but I think what we're planning to do is going to take a few days for part two, and we're going to work on another video or live on BG because yep. we're work, Steve is working on uh, trying to prove exactly what was in BG's hand instead of the fanny pack. Mm. And he's been working on that. So we just got to wait on him to finish that up. And that's going to be our next live possibly. And then we've had somebody else uh, digital as a matter of fact, wanted us to do a timeline on AG where she was yep. on the 13th because uh, GK told investigators that she was in Florida. When we know for a fact she wasn't in Florida, she was in front of Judge Fouts on the 13th. Even though her court date was originally February 16th, it got moved up to the 13th. So we know for a fact that she was in court on that day in Delphi. And I've got all that information. And then we've got a bunch of information that Stephanie sent us on another individual. So that'll give us some time to look into that. Um, believe me, we've got plenty of content coming out. Um, <laughs> one day we're just going to do where we answer questions from the comments underneath the videos um, because there's been a lot of them. So, um, Min, Marv, please, can I send you something for your opinion on a POI comparison? Absolutely. Um, there's my email address. Is it possible you, you, know, can, we, you can put mine up here too? Um, yes. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> You, you know mine by heart now. Because <laughs> everything she gets is sent straight to me. <laughs> I, I can't remember how to spell your last name. K-E-R-S-A-G-E-2 at Gmail. K-E-R-A-S... No, S A G E. S A G E. E 2 at Gmail. All right, there we go. Um, yeah, the best way to do it is if you're going to email in Marvelous Investigates, include Frank on there because I just forward him everything anyway. You guys got to realize that she works a full-time job five days a week and she doesn't have time to really do much with the case during through the daytime so if you would want to send it to me that's fine or if you want to send it to mark which is fine also she just forwards everything to me anyway so 
so question is FSG confirmed to saying he saw bridge guy did yes. he contribute to the That's sketch he confirmed it was confirmed that he did say that he did see bridge guy he passed him on the trail which is an awful funny thing because if he passed Cheyenne Cheyenne would have uh, walked right past BG also yeah it's just kind of strange but mm -hmm. he did. question is there a way to get across the creek without going through the water Randy yep, yep there is yeah if, if you're at the north end of the bridge you can cut through the private property to get to where Ron Logan's property is but that's the only way you can do and go what but about if you're on the south side you have to cross the creek well there are some sandbars now when you go south of where the girls were found going toward Wilson's Bridge there are some sandbars you can walk across the no water but depends on like the day we were there the water is that high so the sandbars we're probably well, covered. Yeah, we're covered. So they wouldn't know sandbars were at. Interesting. Yeah. And I've always yeah. had a, a, a thought that maybe they parked the vehicle at Wilson's Bridge because I watched a, a video one time and you're able to drive up under the Wilson Bridge without your car being seen from the main road. What if BG killed the girls and walked creek bed all the way to Wilson's Bridge to the vehicle? Where he wouldn't have been seen. That's great. Yeah, yeah and I, that's one place I have not been able to get to, but that's next on my list for when I go this summer is to go and look at this Wilson Bridge area. Oh, right. I wish I could go out there. Oh. Well, that was one of the things I was going to show you. People were asking about. Wilson I know. Bridge, but cold. It was oh. cold, and I went down the hills. And <laughs> oh, it was so, rough out there. Believe me, <laughs> it was. It was rough. Oh, yeah. Once I did it, and I was like, "Man, this guy had to have been athletic, Superman, or something." Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm, not, I'm not no young buck anymore. You know, I'm 52 years old, but you know, I'm still in uh, some decent shape. You know, but man, I'm telling you, <laughs> walking up them hills was no joke. Yep. I hurt so bad the next day. Oh, yeah. I, I couldn't, couldn't walk. <laughs> I couldn't walk on the bridge to get the photo. I couldn't do it. My legs were shaking. I just couldn't do it. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> a nice warm day. We're, I'm going to get a group of people to come out and we'll reenact that. Okay. Ooh, there you go. <laughs> um,. SD said, Ellie said the girls were killed in the immediate area of where they were found. Maybe dragged a short distance. Could the killers have dumped her clothes in the creek to destroy DNA? Steve would be able to answer that one. Well, DNA is extremely fragile. Um, you, you, and it's extremely hardy. It just depends. Um, it depends on type of DNA. Is it blood? Or is it skin cells? Is it touch DNA? Uh, I mean, there's so many different levels of uh, uh, what injuries were done at what time and how much DNA is on an article, you know, and as technology uh, grows and gets better, it takes, you know, over the years, uh, from where they first started with how much DNA it took to be able to analyze to what it is now, you know, uh, and who knows what it's going to be in uh, one year, five years. And um, is you know we can only hope and pray that that the technologies do uh, progress to the point that uh, they'll what whatever DNA they have, no matter what content, how much, uh, that uh, they'll be able to solve it with the DNA because it's hard to argue DNA. Yeah. I, I got a question for Steve real quick. I know Steve, you watched the helicopter footage at the crime scene. And a lot of people speculated that they saw a great big teddy bear sitting there. Did you happen to see that? Uh, no, I haven't. Uh, like I said, I hadn't really looked into it. Uh, it'd be interesting 
if someone could point out about what time frame it is and what location, I, I most certainly would look at it. Uh, it would be, you know, you're looking at, it depends on the location where the teddy bear was. I mean, if it's up there near the walking trails, is it something that someone, uh, uh, boyfriend, girlfriend that dropped or some kid walking the trails, playing and well, just actually drop a teddy bear? I well, mean, there's so many contexts yeah. that it could be in. I don't, I don't know what the context they're talking about. Okay. okay. You, it, I'll send you the video uh, later on or maybe tomorrow. But it's an actual video from a helicopter right above where the girls were found. And it shows the girls laying there. And there's a teddy bear right next to the girls, a great big teddy bear. That's what it looks like to a lot of us. So well, I, I would like for you to take a look at that and see what you think. I asked. Chris, have you seen that? Uh, I don't think so. No. Curious. Oh, we'll send it to you. Thank oh, yeah. you. Because I yeah. asked. Uh, I asked Carrie and told him about supposed to be bears and stuff down there, and she said there was no bears, no teddy bears or anything, no dolls or anything down there. Well, uh, I, yeah, I can play tricks on you, and um, once you get an image in your head, it's hard to get it out. And so, uh, but I, I most certainly will look at it. Oh, I'll, yeah, it's I'll, right to, out when I'll run it through some filters like, and stuff. I mean, you could actually see one of the girls laying there you can see what it looks like a knife stuck in a tree stump you can see the C, uh, csi guy is uh, standing over one of the girls and, and it was just freaky i was like how did they get this and get it published out there without le knowing about it well yeah. another thing is we got to make sure we're in a digital age now that we don't have something that's fabricated um just that's to make why, sure yeah, yeah that's why yeah, yeah, very, yeah. very careful there's some, wanted, yeah, there's some sick people out there. That's why I want to send it to you, just so you can check it out and okay. give your opinion on it. SD says, were the clothes found near where Libby's sneaker was found? No. No. It was all down the creek. That's why they're floating down the creek. Okay, let's see here. Um, I thought they didn't have enough DNA to run through CODIS. I did the video of the information about DNA. Um, they can generate the DNA in larger amounts. Um, Carrie said there were, um, Libby definitely fought back to the killer and she used her claws and stuff fingernails so there was supposed to be dna underneath her claws so they can regenerate dna but it depends on what they did that day with it yeah i got okay. a message from lynn uh marv on yeah, I'm, I'm i'm looking right now okay um, let's see here. I've emailed you a short comparison clip. Okay, I'll take a look at it. Let's see here. Yeah, I know who Ben Weaver is, Jill. I still don't get why or how KG deleted stuff off Libby's social media that's tampering with evidence. It's a legit concern. I, according to what Becky Patty has said, everything that kg deleted off of libby's social media was given to the police and i think that was done like what a week prior no deletion? this was just after just after the murders but why would she have libby's phone when it should have been in evidence 
it's it's not that she had the phone she had yeah. all of her passwords to her applications yeah so she could go on any computer device and up yeah. Libby's applications and delete whatever she wanted off of them yep um is it true that there were trail cams that caught bg and girls on film no I wish they did. Yeah. We know of one uh, trail camera that was destroyed, and that was on the south end over in that area. We know that camera was destroyed. Yeah, it's been destroyed several times. But they did have a cam uh, trail cam where the beginning of when people come on 300. But if they had the working trail cam on the south side, like I did a video about it, we would have seen a clear photo of the killer and knowing what he had on him with any type of weapons from that trail camera. All right. Uh, let's see here. Yes, uh, Rony 4 is in chat. She's toward the bottom. Missing persons PNW. I can't. I can't do anything on my end. Oh, uh, let's see here. Got her. Okay. Okay. Vanessa, you talk about. Oh, that's the other way. Never mind. Yeah, he started uh, two different uh, stories on the girls at that time. I need to look up that guy real quick. He went so by two different names. One. Love it, let me see. One by Charles something, and then, of course, his regular name. Okay, can you guys go ahead and answer any questions you see towards the bottom? I'm there. Um, I have to use the restroom. We're at <laughs> digital. There was a mole exterminator working on the fields near Big White Building near the CPS. The perp has a white utility van disguised as an exterminator's truck. It's in the UAP summary. If you guys are talking about Brad Heath, he lives right here on the trail. His yeah. House is right there. Yeah. Yep. All right. The storage units. Yeah. But from my understanding, the truck that was seen at the CPS building was a pickup truck, not a van. Yeah, it was a pickup truck. At the uh, at the CPS building, is that what you said? Yeah. No, it was like a car, supposed to be a car at the CPS building, but a white pickup truck was on the Freedom parking lot. Oh. Seeing the helicopter. Okay, I just want to ask you guys a question because I came across some old because I started going back um, at the very beginning uh, just to see if, uh, early theories, you know, because sometimes things get overlooked. I had heard mention of a white Dodge Dart. Um, have you ever heard of that? Or yes, has that been yes. debunked. Tina, Tina told me Tina Riddler told me about it. It was part of the drug. This guy did drugs. Uh -huh. uh, so, and then he usually abandoned it somewhere that he wouldn't get caught. Kind of like he buys cars and then gets rid of it with a paper plate. So, there was supposed to be a white car with a paper plate there. Yes, yes, yeah.
Oh, I'm so used to having Marvelous here. We're just kind of sitting here. Oh, sorry, guys. Yeah, that's, uh, I'm trying to read the chat and everything else at the same but time. Yeah, I, I, I can't. I can't move to the next question because she's got oh, to call on. right now. Um, one, uh, Casey Martinez. Has anyone thought this might be a botch? La Sting. They did lay KK out of the uh, the streets for three years. Don't know no. that question. Really, I don't know. Hey, Daniel James, how you doing? Let me see here. I know uh, somebody says about the that Stephanie, the black Dakota truck. We know who owns that. We just did a thing on him a little bit earlier than that in this show. Because his truck was caught on camera from somewhere. They're on 300. Uh, Michael says, talking on the phone made Keegan out of breath, out of shape, and, uh, get a new hairstyle, too, because you're, what? Uh, I'm going back through here. Hold on. Let me see here. Uh, what about the professor removing the geocaching thing out there? We still don't know why, the reason he removed it. Um... He knew there was a murder going on out there, and the police should have got it before he took it because there were fingerprints on that box, but they didn't do it. So when he turned turned it in to the police, they couldn't take it take it from him because it was already cross contaminated on that box. Um, something yes. about Jade. Yes, that's correct, digital. <laughs> and uh, JW is also charged with uh, child solicitation also. All right, so we I think we're caught up. Yeah. Thank you for doing that while I use the restroom. <laughs> Final thoughts for tonight. Um, sounds like we are gonna do a part three <laughs> on on the POIs. Um, break your third final thoughts. My final thoughts is BG. We're coming for you, buddy. Mm -hmm. We are coming. Mm -hmm. It might take five years, 10 years, 15 years, but we're going to get you. As long as everybody on our the creators and channels all work together, there's no reason for not one of these creators to be able to figure out who this person is. I agree. Mm -hmm. Randy, your final thoughts? Well, I'm hopefully, my final thought, I'm hopefully... What we did today, yo, some people, a new look of the suspects we went through tonight, matching the details and of who could be, who couldn't be. But we know we got down to several people that comes close to that uh, NASA photo. Yep. Chris, your final thoughts? Uh, yeah, I agree with Frank. Uh, we're coming for you, um, and I'm excited for the possibilities. Just seeing what, <laughs> what, uh, how Steve just put that together uh, from my show from last night that quickly, um, and that's just kind of just out of the left field, out of the box thinking from my, you know, from my side. Um, and uh, like I said, I I have my areas of strength and weakness. POIs is I would say my weakness. And I think everybody's got their strengths, and I think that's why coming together, we can really, you know, right. Uh, do I a don't lot of work. I don't understand why the all these some of these other creators are they're, they're just snooty, and I hate to say that, but they act like they're better than everybody else. They don't want to work with nobody else. And one prime example, G H. Mm -hmm. <laughs> everybody knows who G H is. 
Have you seen my dance? Or my uh... <laughs> Yes, I watched that video. That was pretty hilarious. <laughs> that was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know he was shitting his pants when he saw that. Uh, um like i said i i don't want to have Ill, any woes towards uh anybody but uh i just know that i know he, he saw the video because the the live he did uh he was in a very bad mood i actually kind of feel bad because i feel like he kind of took it out on his man so but anyway. i want to answer a question real quick for digital we're cp and de friends now i don't know about it much as friends but they are related by marriage One's a nephew, and B.E. is married into the family. Yep. Steve, your final thoughts on tonight? i can just tell you this. I've looked into the eyes of a lot of families who lost everything in, a, in just yeah. a second. That once they're notified that there's a death in the family. So I want everyone out there that's uh, watching this show, relay this thought to yourself to your spouse to your friends think of the most dearest person in your life if they were snatched away from you by a monster who would you want to help you and how would you want them to help you and we owe it to all the victims that we do that that we put ourselves out there and uh, we think and uh, and ask other people um, try to help solve this thing put our, you know these families deserve it and um, always have them in your thoughts and prayers and um, hopefully this thing will come to an end quickly. Um, I really don't want to wait 15 years. I, I'm no, I, I would be most happy if it ended in 15 seconds. But uh, let's just keep those families in mind. And that's the driving force that law enforcement looks at that we have to see if we can't um, ease the suffering and, and uh, what these families are going through the tragedy that they've endured. But uh, Anyway, those are my closing thoughts. I agree 100%. Um, and we are, you know, we're all in this together. We're working our different angles. Um, Chris, you've done a great job and we love partnering with you. Same with Thank thing you. with Peg. Um, you know, you're part of our family. I'm hoping we're part of your family. And of course, this we, is awesome. We hope to, to work with you more in the future. Thank you. Thank so you I, to everybody. Oh, yes. Yeah. And I had some people asking about um, people's channels. Um, so I am going to show you where you can find some information here. So if you go on Marvelous Investigates page and you were to click on the butterfly, and you go to the channel button. Randy's channel is here. The Monsters Under Our Bed is here. Fig Solves is here. Um, I have the Captain and Clutch on here also. Um, and as I'm partnering with more channels, I'm going to be adding them on here. It's important that, um, you know, we're supporting each other. So I encourage you to go to these channels and, and look at them and subscribe um, so that we can, we can support one another. I mean, we might not all agree on our thoughts and theories. And that's the whole point. Yeah. We try to work together to see a common goal is the, is the same thing. You know, you don't see exactly us fighting with different creators. We don't do that. We 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 uh, want to work with the other creators, such as yourself, Chris and Fig. And True Crime with Shannon just said, "I'd love to help and work with you guys. Let me know." Uh, send us an email, True Crime with Shannon. We love, you know, not everybody agrees, and that's a good thing because if everybody agreed on everything, uh, we, we would never have no get work anywhere. Work. We would have no work. You, you have, yeah, you <laughs> have to have those opposing views and thoughts and everything. That's what makes us all 
valuable in this, you know, as YouTube creators? Like I got the research experience. You got Randy, he knows the area by the back of his hand. You got Steve, he's a former detective, is it's a certified forensic specialist. You got Chris, he's definitely got his his things he's good at, you know. So and Marv, she's the computer whiz over here. I can tell you this about Chris. Hey, I'm I'm learning a lot. <laughs> I would have enjoyed working if Chris had been in law enforcement. I would have loved oh. my imagination and his imagination got together on a case or two. Uh, well, that's yeah. thank you, Steve. That's uh, I, I can't even tell you what that means to hear somebody in law enforcement say that, especially from you. That, that's cool. Thank you. I'm yes, sir, humbled I mean, and honored. I mean, thank you. <laughs> Anything else, guys? We're at the two hour, 15 minute mark. Good night, guys. No. Have a great Easter. And um, take care. And I'll see y'all next week. And we'll work on the, this next one um, as far as uh, uh, some of the, uh, what's under that uh, in the right hand image, uh, the fanny pack. Uh, and I'm going to work on it. It's ready to go, it's just on y'all's uh, timeline. Okay. Cool. Okay. All right. Well, good, night, guys. good night, good night, Steve. Good night. Chris, thank you so much. Um, we love having you on here. Thank you to Fig. We know that he had to jump off and <laughs> and eat and have some family time. Um, Randy, thank you so much. No problem. Frank, always a pleasure. Always My a pleasure. Motto. Oh. Peace out. <laughs> One love, all. Yep. <laughs> Hit that go. like button, subscribe, <laughs> oh, okay. um, now. look at the other channels, and thank you, everybody. Happy Easter. Happy, Happy Easter, Easter, everybody. Happy Easter. Good night. Good night. So as a, everybody join, um, drops off here, you know, we hope that everybody enjoyed the information tonight. Um, get it up there. You. And, then, and another thing, guys, if you guys have any information that might be helpful, yes. please send it to us. Please send it to us. And we'll look into it and and see what we can do with it, if there's anything we can do with it. Right. Exactly. If you have any other POIs that you want us to match up to what Steve's doing, send it to us. Um, we'll definitely get it um, to him. and. Let them do everything. And we've got a lot of content coming up, so um, be prepared. <laughs> All right, guys. Y'all have a good Easter. God bless. Peace out. One love. Love you all. Thank you. Good night. Thank you to all of our new subscribers also. We love you. Um, and to the old. Good have night, a good night.